I'm Julia Marchari Alexander. I'm the executive director of the Walters Art Museum, which is the wonderful building in which you are now standing. And I am delighted to welcome you all this evening to celebrate the Hispanic Heritage Month here at the Walters. The Walters houses over 33,000 objects ranging from 55 centuries of art from cultures around the world. I cannot think of a more appropriate venue for a place to celebrate the art, culture, lives, society, and the, the contributions that Hispanics have made to the life of this world over time and in the present. So thank you all for being here. I hope that you enjoy your evening here. We um, are free every Thursday, we're free every day. So I want you to remember that, that's our big message. We are free and open to all of you every day when we are open. But on Thursdays we do something really special, which is to welcome everyone into the museum from 5 to 8.30, which are after hours. And we believe that our mission of bringing art and people together on Thursday nights is especially good because we bring beer and wine um, to help you discover people and art together. So I encourage you to come to our free Thursday evenings, which are thanks to Constellation Energies. And then tonight we have this added special event. So I'm delighted to bring all of these great threads together um, this evening. It's my real pleasure to introduce the Honorable Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, and I probably butchered all of that, but um, wait, I have to... Wait till I get to your name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Two hyphenated ladies. Um, I do have to say that moving to Baltimore, I've just moved from San Diego, and some of you may know that we've had a little mayoral blip. Um, <laughs> So I'm a really, really big fan of Stephanie's, not just because she's a great mayor, but also Baltimore has just been named the best city in which to live in terms of women in leadership. So the fact that you had a fantastic mayor who was a woman was a draw. And when I got to meet her on my first day, I really felt like I had met a superstar. So, so thank you, Stephanie, for being here. And I think that I will stop and just say, in Baltimore, there is no woman who needs no introduction other than Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. So thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. thank you so much, Maria. Good evening, everyone. I want to uh, thank you all for being here on this wonderful, beautiful evening and in this uh, renewed summer. I'm, we're enjoying, it's a perfect day to play hooky, so if you didn't play in the beginning of the day, I feel like we're playing hooky now, having a little fun. So I want to thank uh, everyone for being here, uh, particularly I, I mentioned uh, Julia and everyone here at the Walters Art Museum. They've done a fantastic job. Uh, and I want to thank everyone here, particularly the staff at the Walters, and all, everyone that's been uh, working with us this, uh, this evening in the service. I think they deserve a round of applause for their hard work this evening. I also want to thank the representatives from the Central and South American embassies and consulates for being here. We have a great partnership here in Baltimore, and it was wonderful uh, to see you all. I'm looking forward to having more opportunities to work together. I want to thank all of the members of the Baltimore City Hispanic Commission. Raise your hand. Hispanic Commission. That's the thing. I also want to thank our sponsors for this evening, PNC Bank and State Farm. Thank you very much. So a few people here uh, that uh, work with me, and I'm not going to be able to name everybody, but I do want to mention, uh, there he is over there, uh, my Chief of Staff, Alex Sanchez. Thank you very much for being here. My Deputy Commissioner for the Baltimore Police Department, Deputy Rodriguez, I saw, did he sneak out or is he still here? 
He was here for a decent amount of time. He had to leave. I want to thank him for being here. As well as, where's Catalina? Uh, everybody knows Catalina. So today and this evening we come together to celebrate the histories, the culture, and the contributions of Latinos in Baltimore City. The contribution of the Latino community can be found in all aspects across our city, from Baltimore City public school system to the judicial system and in the business community across Baltimore. Hispanics educate our children, serve our communities, and boost our economy. In the last decade, we have witnessed a 136% increase in Latinos choosing Baltimore as a place to live. You have brought with you a very profound and positive influence in our city. We want the Hispanic community to continue to grow in Baltimore and help us to achieve our goal of growing Baltimore by 10,000 families. I am going to put you down for, what, 4,000 families? Is that an achievable goal? See, the clapping means that you've agreed and now it's a contract. 4,000 families. <laughs> So today we recognize the many contributions of Hispanic residents uh, have made to grow and strengthen Baltimore City. Contributions made by individuals such as our keynote speaker, Judge Carrion. It's good to see her. Born in New York City to Puerto Rican parents, Judge Carrion was the first person of Hispanic heritage to be appointed as a judge, first to the District Court of Maryland in Baltimore City, and then to the Circuit Court of uh, Maryland in Baltimore City. Judge Carrion graduated from the College of Notre Dame and the University of Baltimore School of Law as a chair of Baltimore, is it, was it in here, Notre Dame? Oh, so Notre Dame, sorry. Uh, as chair of the Judiciary Committee on the Court's Interpretation and Translation System, she worked to improve our court, ser our, uh, court services for individuals who speak English as a second language. Uh, she has been the recipient of several awards, including Maryland's Top 100 Women for the years 2000 and 2003, the Daily uh, Record Leadership in Law Award in the 2011, the Maryland Hisp Hispanic Bar Association Outstanding Achievement Award. It's a mouthful. You probably don't even have any space on your wall for art with all these awards. So 2010 Women's Law Center, Rosalind B. Bell Award. Let's give Judge Karen a big round of applause. I do have a certificate of recognition for Judge Karen in recognition of your distinguished service and leadership to the citizens of Baltimore. Your many years of faithful service demonstrates your commitment to helping make our city a better place to live. Thank you very much, Judge Karen. The woman of the hour, Judge Karen. That comes from the woman of the year. I am uh, delighted to be here, Buenas Noches, celebrating the Hispanic heritage of our nation. I want to thank Mayor Rollins Blake, uh, the Baltimore City Hispanic Commission, and Catalina Rodriguez for the invitation and the opportunity to be with you this evening. I also want to thank the Walters Art Museum for hosting us here today. We celebrate the National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15 to October 15. It recognizes our vital economic contribution, our role in America's success in expanding trade, and our strong commitment to family and country. It also commemorates the Hispanic Latino culture, which continues to deeply enrich our social, intellectual, and artistic life. It is the celebration of our heritage, the music we feel in our hearts, the tingles we feel down our spine when we see our flag, 
The foods our grandmother made, the dances we learned as children. The legislative history of the Hispanic Heritage Month shows that it began as a week-long celebration through an act of Congress approved on September 17 of 1968. Unlike most other ethnic heritage months, the Hispanic Heritage Month straddles the last half of September and the first time half of October. The reason for this is its precursor, the Hispanic Heritage Week. The week of September 15 was chosen because several Latin American countries celebrate their independence on that day, including Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. I knew I was going to hear some of that. Thank you. <laughs> On September 16, Mexico celebrates its independence, and Chile's Independence Day is on September 18. In 1998, the celebration was extended to a month, as all good Latin things would have, would do. <laughs> and it now includes El Dia de la Raza, Columbus Day, on October 12th. It is no secret that Hispanics constitute the fastest growing ethnic group in the United States. In fact, according to the 2010 census, 50.5 million residents in the United States identified themselves as of Hispanic or Latino origin. Between 2000 and 2010, the Hispanic population in the United States grew by 43% which was four times the growth in the total population. In Maryland in 2000, the Hispanic but Latino population was 4.3% in 2000. In 2010, it increased to 8.2%. The Hispanic community is now the nation's largest minority community. These numbers also show that the nation's Hispanic population grew much, fa much faster than the population as a whole. This growth did not begin with the success, and now I'm going to date myself, of Ricky Martin, <laughs> Jennifer Lopez, Mariano Rivera, Eva Longoria, or Sofia Vergara. America has a deep connection to the Hispanic Latino culture and history. More than 500 years ago, soldiers and sailors from Spain arrived on the shores of the Americas. Spain brought the first explorers, missionaries, and settlers to the Americas. Cities, missions, forts, ranches, shipyards, industry, and businesses were established by Spaniards and later, later by Mexicans and other Hispanic Latinos. As you may know, the Hispanic heritage of America extends to 1513, when Ponce de Leon reached La Florida in search of that fountain of youth, and beyond 1821, when Mexico achieved its independence. Spain exercised governmental power over parts of the American continent for three centuries. Spain established over 200 cities and towns throughout America. The social, cultural, and political contributions made during that period are still influencing our nation today. Across our land, names of several states and hundreds of counties, towns, valleys, mountains, lakes, rivers, bays, deserts, canyons, and other geographical locations give testimony to the rich Hispanic origins and presence. Thomas Jefferson said once that the oldest history of the United States is written in Spanish. Let me give you some historical examples. 
Or the Ponce de Leon explored today's Sunshine State in 1513, it was not until 1565 when a gentleman by the name of Don Pedro Mendez de Aviles founded the city of San Agustin, St. Augustine today, 42 years before the British settled Jamestown, Virginia, and 55 years before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. The first Catholic mass was officiated in La Florida at the request of Don Pedro. La Florida, which then extended north to Canada and west to the Mississippi River, was governed by him for the next 10 years. In 1598, Don Pedro de Peralta founded La Villa Real de la Santa Fe de San Francisco de Asís, known today as Santa Fe, New Mexico. Today, Santa Fe is the oldest state capital. The Spaniards set up ranches and founded other settlements, including Albuquerque, the territory of New Mexico, back then also included present-day Arizona, which is interesting or ironic in light of the state's strict anti-illegal immigration measures. By the late 17th century, the Spaniards' borderlands in the United States were being pressed by England, France, and Russia. In 1689, in response to the erection of a small fort in Texas by French explorer La Salle, Mexican-born officer Alonso de Leon founded two missions in Texas. In 1718, the missions of San Antonio de Valero was founded. The mission later became known as the Alamo during the Texas Revolution of 1836. The city of San Antonio, Texas grew around that mission. California had been explored by Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo in 1542, but no effort was made by Spain to settle this area until Spain became concerned with Russia's and England's interest. A governor was named Gaspar de Portula, and along with Francisco, with Franciscans missionaries, they founded the mission and fort of San Diego in 1769. Forts were also built in San Francisco, Monterrey, and Santa Barbara. Pueblos were established, San Jose in 1777, Nuestra Señora de la Reina de Los Angeles, Los Angeles, in, 18, in 1781, and Santa Cruz in 1797. New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada, Utah, and parts of Wyoming and Colorado were incorporated into the United States after Mexico's defeat in 1846 to 1848 war with the United States. Texas then acquired its independence from Mexico in 1836 and became the Lone Star Republic until it became part of the United States in 1845. I say all of this because the Hispanic experience is an integral component of the American experience. Has there been a revival of sorts? Yes, and it is renewed every day. This rebirth brings with it many challenges, frustrations, and concerns. The purpose of the celebration is to recognize the contribution of Hispanic Latinos to the city of Baltimore. This purpose demonstrates an aspiration to include all people and to create a successful environment for long-term growth of the Hispanic Latino communities in Baltimore City. And I applaud our mayor for that. In the Circuit Court for Baltimore City, the court I have the privilege to sit on, we are presented with challenges every day as we serve our diverse communities. We have worked hard to open the courthouse doors by improving the quality and access of our interpreter services in an effort to bring down the language barriers and, have pre and, and prevent an accepted participation in the judicial process. There is still much more to be done including the translation of critical documents and improvements in the areas uh, of administrative agencies. 
educational background, and geographical location and income and marital status issues as well. Many people in our communities lack comfort with an understanding of cultural, sexual orientation and racial differences. Many citizens, and yes, even judges, have not reacted well to our growing Hispanic, Asian, gay, and lesbian, and Middle Eastern communities. Diversity is a concept that focuses on a broader set of qualities than race, gender, and sexual orientation. It means respect, recognizing the unique contributions that individuals with many types of differences can make, and creating the opportunities for that to happen. Clearly, judges don't have a constituency, nor should they. But it is important for the public to have confidence in the judiciary, confidence when they walk into the courtroom. Diversity is of tremendous value in reaching and securing that confidence. On a personal note, one afternoon after sitting on the bench for approximately one year, and I've sat on that bench for 17 years now, a Hispanic young lady and her mother came into the courtroom at the end of the day looking for the brand new Hispanic judge. They wanted to know whether the summons that they had in their hand required them to appear in court. They found me and I answered their question. That is what diversity offers. Access and openness to our courts, departments, and agencies. Comfort that someone like you is there. Culture is not easy to define. That's because it reflects a mixture of tangibles, people, words, sounds, places, and intangibles, values, attitudes, feelings, and experiences. Culture and cultural diversity should be seen as an asset for any organization. Through these years of celebrating the Hispanic Heritage Month in Baltimore City, we continue to embrace the diversity of our city. I am confident that our city will continue through action and specific initiatives to do so. I congratulate again Mayor Rawlings Blake for this. I thank you for including me as part of this important event. I also thank you for celebrating with all Hispanic Latinos our National Heritage Month. I hope that my presentation has helped in your understanding that we have been here before and we belong. I thank you. Thank you very much, Judge Catheon, for reminding us the very important part that we have always played in the fabric and the history of our country. And I hope those little kids that are running around in the audience uh, took, took note of where we have come from. Okay. Okay, bueno, buenas noches. Uh, my name is Ana Maria Schwartz Caballero, and I'm the chair of the Baltimore City Hispanic Commission. I hope that you are enjoying tonight's event. Uh, first, we would like to thank you, Madam Mayor, for your leadership and support of the Baltimore City Hispanic Commission, and we will do the very best we can to bring you those 4,000 families. Okay. Uh, We would also like to thank our host, Dr. Marciari Alexander and her staff at the museum. And this, this place is such a marvelous, marvelous uh, venue to hold our event. Uh, again, to our keynote, Judge Carrion, thank you for your outstanding service to Baltimore City and in particular to its Latino citizens. Uh, every year during our Hispanic Heritage Month celebration, we have recognized the commitment and advocacy of students and volunteers who work in the Latino community here in Baltimore City. 
This year, we have added two new categories to our awards, that of educator and service provider. The nomination process over the summer was a rotund success. 40 plus nominations were submitted. And while we only have four awardees tonight, every nominee deserves recognition, for they serve as pillars within our community and across our city and we thank all of you for your work. Okay. In your honor, Madam Mayor, we present the 2013 Mayor's Hispanic Heritage Award, and if you could join me in presenting those awards. The Education Award recipient is Luis Espinosa. An assistant principal at Lakeland Elementary, Luis has been able to integrate Latino parents in the school community by ensuring that communications and programming are fully bilingual and bicultural. Congratulations. The Youth Award recipient is Brenda Zavala. As senior at Digital Harbor High School, Brenda became a spokesperson and passionate activist with CASA during the Maryland Dream Act campaign. Brenda has a 3.96 average. The Service Provider Award recipient is Blanca Picasso. A social service associate for the Tahiri Justice Center, Blanca has worked in Baltimore City for nearly two decades to empower and support Latino women who have been victims of domestic violence. Finally, the Volunteer Award recipient is Enrique Rivadeneira. <laughs> Owner of the Latin Palace Restaurant, Enrique has volunteered his time business and resources to benefit Latino women cancer survivors. Okay, let's give all of our awardees uh, another round of applause. We have one more special recognition this evening. Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. I have a proclamation designating October 3rd, 2013 as Esperanza Center Day in celebration of the 50th anniversary in Baltimore. So I would love to present this citation. Esperanza Center. Thank you so much for all that you do in Baltimore. I feel like I have to, I'm sorry to take it back, but I, have to, I feel like I have to read a little bit of it. I talked to the, uh, whereas the mission of the Esperanza Center is provided essential resources and compassionate services to immigrants in Baltimore and in the region and to promote citizenship and health and family unity and community integration and 
uh, whereas Esperanza Center uh, offers services in four areas, health, education, immigration, legal services, and community referral services. And whereas the center was the first of its kind when they opened their doors back in 1963. And for the past 50 years, they've continued to be a vital resource and a friend to thousands upon thousands of members of the Latino and immigrant communities in Baltimore region. And whereas the citizens of Baltimore wish the incredibly wonderful staff, volunteers, board of directors, and clients of Esperanza Center a great 50th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you.